sound. There we go. Everybody. Nice to see you all, um, <clears throat> and welcome to MT Guitar, of course. Thanks for joining us. So today uh, we're doing a lesson on how to figure out and learn songs by ear. And I'm actually going to be doing some live uh, ear training for songs that you would like. So think of a song you would like, you can write it now or any time throughout this stream and basically I will uh, assuming I've never heard it before or assuming I've never played it before I will put it on my speakers for as long as I need to to figure it out um, and I'm hoping for my sake uh, it won't take too long and for your sake so <clears throat> um, ideally I would be able to learn it fairly quickly right that's kind of the point here uh, and then I'll show you um, some strategies that you can have uh, that you can deploy to 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 try to learn these songs by ear. Hey Ben, nice to see you. All right, so we can just jump on in. <clears throat> Once people kind of get here, looks like we don't have that many people yet, so I would li I'd like to jump in when people are here, so. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Um, so if you ask musicians who are, especially who are studio musicians who play for a living, uh, what is the best, what is the most important skill you can have? Um, I'm guessing that more than half, if not maybe maybe half or so, uh, would say ear training okay so um, ear training and that might be surprising because you might think well uh, wouldn't it be technique wouldn't it be um, speed or accuracy or even tone and yeah um, those are those are so crucial so that might be the answer of many many professional musicians but if you hear somebody who has great technique, accuracy, and tone, but they don't have a good ear, uh, well, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to say something. Rhythm would be a very, very popular choice among professional musicians. If you ask them what's the most important skill for a mus musician to work on, rhythm and groove and timing would be, would be up there. Maybe you would rival ear training. But I'm guessing that ear training would be, would be up there with the people who are really playing a lot of gigs and a lot of studio sessions. 
uh, with different styles, different bands. And that's because it's a matter of survival. It's a matter of can you learn 20 songs with this band, you know, in a day? Sometimes I've had to do that. Can you learn, uh, you know, 30 songs within a few days? Um, can you hear this song in a, in a studio and play it instantly, right? Play the right chords instantly. Um, so, my goal is to teach you that because uh, for whatever reason, it's, it's just not taught on the level that it should be. Um, and, you know, I'm probably guilty of not teaching this enough either. But I see a lot of teachers out there who kind of, they dance around this topic and it's not really heavily taught. So my goal is going to be to uh, develop some material, not only in this live stream, but in general on the Patreon and on, on this YouTube channel, where I actually really try to teach this stuff. Somebody who's done a great job is Justin Guitar. Um, he has a whole transcribing course. Um, I've, I've never taken that course, but I've, I've viewed a couple of his videos and I'm, I'm, re I'm really pleased that he's taken the transcribing by ear thing seriously as a teacher. So you can check his stuff out as well. Um, <clears throat> so that opening song I just played was uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Uh, by Elton John, which was on Lion King. Right? And I actually, I never really learned that song uh, even by listening to it. I just remembered it in my ear and um, a friend of mine wanted me to play for their wedding. So I just figured out an arrangement because I remember the song in my ear. So it kind of came to mind as I was preparing this live stream. So do you guys want to just jump in to this material? Um, there's a few things I'd like to cover today. I think you'll be pleased with it. So intervals, all right, intervals. Um, we're going to kind of start with some, some stuff that uh, is a little bit um, foundation okay you need you need to look at intervals and it may not be the most exciting thing but intervals are pretty pretty essential and we're gonna kind of circle around a couple topics and we may jump back and forth a little bit um, what is an interval let's define that it's the distance between two notes and feel free to say hello hello Ben how are you doing and it's always nice to see who's on here and it's a uh, you know it's a uh, great to connect with you all is the video and sound okay? <clears throat> I'm just going to assume it is. Um, so an interval is a distance between two notes. That's the literal definition. Okay, the distance between two notes. And we can measure the distance quite scientifically, right? So let's start with the most important intervals and we'll kind of define them. If we pick a note, let's say we pick, let's say we pick G, okay? Here's a G chord, but here's a G bass note. If I use an, if I use uh, a G bass note here as my starting point, I can pick now any interval from G. So, the most obvious, or not obvious, but the most uh, kind of crucial to understand is the octave, the octave interval. That would be a perfect eighth or a perfect octave. But we say perfect eighth. It's a little more scientific because um, that's just how we're going to use scale degrees and numbers from here on out. So the reason we say eight is because there are seven notes in a scale. So there are seven um, numbers that we can use for intervals. And then when we get to eight, it's a octave. So G, G. When I have my private students, we usually go through, no matter where they are, we usually, we usually go through the octaves on the guitar, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, my guitar, guitar teacher did that with me on my first lesson, and uh, he was a guitarist with Steve Miller band. His name was Keith Allen, and I kind of, you know, I, I can't thank him enough for that because it was just so crucial to understanding the guitar. You really need to get the octave down, okay? Can you sing it as well? No, no. If you can, then you've successfully outlined the barriers of what's possible in music, of all the notes. Because in between an octave are all 12 notes. 
right? So you would have every note in between this octave. Not every octave of every note, but every note. Every, you know, there's only 12 notes in Western music. Um, now in Indian music, there's more, right? And in certain um, <clears throat> certain uh, certain tonalities, there's 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 more notes. But in terms of Western music that we all listen to, or most of us listen to, vast majority listen to, it's all 12 notes. So get that octave down, run it up and down the neck. Okay, run an octave up and down the neck. Run all the G's and get the sound of that in your ear because you're not going to be, be able to really figure out songs by ear if you can't if you don't know what an octave sounds like okay. what's the next most important interval after important is a, is a tough word what's the next most um, fundamentally important or fundamentally common or useful interval after the octave let's get some audience participation <clears throat> There's a little hint right there. Okay, might have to give you this one. It's the fifth. Okay, the fifth is by far the most important interval after the octave. Um, now, are you guys ready for a little bit of a science lesson here? It's really interesting. If we play a note, any note, like a, it's called a fundamental note when you're talking about um, fundamentals of sound. If we play a fundamental note, what happens? Well, there's things called overtones. So you really, you really want to start to hear the fifth because it's happening already. So if I play an, a, an E bass note, if I think about the next overtone that's already in this note, it's the octave. Okay, that's why the twelfth fret halfway. Halfway to the neck, we have a 12th fret harmonic. That's because it's the first overtone we hear. Da, da, da. The next overtone is a fifth. And guitars are great because you can actually test this all out with harmonics. So if I hit the seventh fret, I've gone two thirds of the neck. And two thirds is uh, two thirds of of the neck creates a fifth harmonic, which is the next overtone. Believe it or not, when you play a note, no is there as an overtone. No. All right. So what we call is we, what we call the fifth is the dominant. We call the fifth the, the dominant. We call it the dominant chord. We call it the dominant scale degree. Dominant interval. So getting the fifth is going to be huge. How do we how do we learn these? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pepper in some um, some famous tunes here. Okay, the Lucasfilm's uh, copyright uh, algorithms are going nuts right now that I'm playing this, but this is the Star Wars theme, and it starts with a perfect fifth. That's just one of them I thought of, but there's there's tens of thousands of, of examples where we can hear a perfect fifth. So getting that fifth down is going to be huge. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to play, say we're playing a G, you'd want to play a fifth. There's a D. Now, can you sing it without playing it? No, da, no, 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 no. And if you can, you'll do well in music theory and ear training courses in college, right? That's going to be uh, something that you know you have to you have to learn. All right, please leave your request if you'd like to um, for me to live transcribe a song in real time. We're not getting a ton of people watching, um, so. We'll see if uh, if people want to learn about this stuff. Um, <clears throat> I guess I can play another song and wait for people to come in. So. Play an original of mine. All right. Let me know you're here and that you'd like to learn this stuff.
So this is called Are We Here? Um, it's an original that I haven't recorded yet. Jono McClee, but I'll check him out. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. <clears throat> so um, intervals would be the distance between two notes. Okay, so we have a distance between two notes, and that's going to be, you know, kind of necessary to learning songs by ear. Anytime you would like, go ahead and put a song down, and I'll learn it live here um, on the spot and I'll show you how I do it, okay? Any song you like. If you don't think of any songs, I'll just have to uh, pick out some random songs that are on my list of requests for the channel. Thanks, Sabroso, nice to see you. Um, so, <clears throat> how's everybody doing? Hopefully you're enjoying the weekend. I played two gigs the last two nights, Thursday and Friday, and uh, I'm off tonight, which is rare to be off on Saturday, so I'm, I'm pleased with that, and I'm uh, looking forward to having some me time, which seems like I don't get a lot of, so hopefully uh, you have a good weekend planned. Okay, John Frusciante does a cover of Modern Love, so I was kind of... So I can kind of get most of it, but I can get the bridge. We start one three nine. Okay, good. Thanks, Ben. So yeah, so keep the requests coming, and we'll we'll look at that song. Um, now let's get back to intervals. It's it's a, it's a big topic. I'm going to make some more formal videos of this on the Patreon and on the channel. If we 
look at a major scale, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's the most important thing in the world when it comes to theory because everything comes from the major scale. So if I have a G major scale, <clears throat> here's my octave, that's my perfect eighth. Okay, we already talked about that. And the fifth note is the fifth interval. Those are the first two important. Let's just kind of, you know, jump down into the rest of them. If we look at every note of a scale, of the major scale, we have all these intervals. Between the G and A is a major second. Every interval is going to be either major or perfect in the major scale. So major second, it's a whole step away. From the one to the three is a major third. You'll notice it's the first two notes of a G major chord. Major second, major third. From the first to the fourth note of the scale is a perfect fourth. Okay, I'll talk about what, how we can recognize that. Very important interval. From the first to the fifth is the perfect fifth. We call it perfect fourth and perfect fifth because you can't have a, per, a major or minor fourth or fifth. It's just not how it works. The second, third, sixth, and seventh can be major or minor. The fourth and fifth are stabilizing intervals. We don't consider them major or minor. Okay, so major second, major third. This is something you can do to warm up. Perfect fourth, get your ear going, perfect fifth. Now, between the first and sixth notes, major sixth, okay, major sixth. Now, between the first and seventh notes, major seventh, one of the harder intervals to hear. Now, perfect octave, perfect eighth. Hey, George, yes, I am busy, but you know, that's normal in the summer. Hey, A, L, M, A, O. It's Mitch, by the way, but good to see you. Beach Boys, wouldn't it be nice? Perfect, thanks, Abroso. Pink Floyd, Lucifer, Sam. Okay, good. Perfect, we will go through those. Um, so, you want to get the, get the sound of these intervals in your ear. Major second. So, can you do it without playing the guitar? Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth. Major seventh, perfect octave, perfect eighth. Now you can go minor on all these tones. And you can go minor second by flatting everything. So I flat the second, there's the second. Here's Jaws. Da 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 da. That's what we do in music school when, when we're learning intervals. Major second. Happy birthday to you. You can use happy birthday as a reminder of what the major second sounds like. So we have Jaws, happy birthday. Uh, if you want to go descending, you can do, um, well, no, let's keep this simple. Uh, for, for descending for major second, yesterday. Okay. Minor third, green sleeves. So instead of going up a major third, we can go up a minor third. That would be a minor third interval. Very important for, uh, especially if I'm like in E major, going from the third to fifth degree is a minor third. So that would be green sleeves. Green sleeves. Coming down, descending would be Hey Jude. Okay, so you can use these songs as reminders of what they sound like. Pretty fun to do. Now the perfect fourth, here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Right? That's a perfect fourth. Da 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 da. From the five to the one is a perfect fourth. Five to the eight. Tritone. Anybody know the tritone? My girl. Um, I'm not sure, George. Uh, I've got sunshine. I've got that's a descending minor, a major second. Sunshine. That's a descending major third. I don't know if there's a famous interval from My Girl. I never learned it. Um, anybody know the tritone? It's The Simpsons. The Simpsons. What is the tritone? What the heck am I even talking about? Well, the tritone is in between the fourth and fifth. 
It's also called the blues note or the double note. Um, and it, in a minor pentatonic scale, it's the flat five. It's the flat five in any scale, but you probably recognize it in the, in the blues scale. So, the Simpsons. Very important interval in jazz. Maybe not so much in pop and rock. Now, the, per the perfect fifth, we already covered. Okay. The minor sixth in my life, the Beatles. Okay, that would be the third to the eighth uh, scale degree goes a minor sixth interval. Da, da. So you can play that song in your head while you're in line at the bank or in traffic and go da, 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 da. major sixth. I'm sorry, major, minor sixth. Minor sixth, minor sixth. Get that sound in your ear. The major six is really fun. It's NBC chimes. No hands. It's just an open G triad, but it's from the fifth to the third degree. That's a major sixth interval. So, major sixth. There's the sixth. All right. Minor seventh. We're almost done. I know it's a lot. Star Trek, right? At least that's what I learned in college. That's the Star Trek theme, the first two notes. Getting near the end here, major seventh is a tough one. It happens in Take On Me. Uh, uh, so when you do, uh, I'll be That's a major seventh, but uh, maybe a, a better one to think about would be the somewhere over the rainbow. Uh, somewhere, oh, that third note is a major seventh from the G. Speaking of uh, somewhere over the rainbow, the perfect octave. If you want to get that in your head, it would be the first two notes of somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere, somewhere. So, when you're in traffic, sing somewhere over the rainbow, the first couple notes, and you'll be getting the sound of the octave in your in your ear. All right, good. Thanks, Don. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so that's a lot, and this is meant as a as a kick in the butt for you all to get going on intervals. Okay, not enough people teach it. I'm guilty as well, but I'm going to be changing that because if you really want to train your ear, and my opening statement was uh, many musicians would tell you that the most important skill is by far ear training. Many would say rhythm, some would say tone, some would say vocabulary, but most would say ear training and, and rhythm, okay? Which is not what we don't want to hear because it's, that's, you know, it's like, oh, well, isn't it shredding? No, it's not. It's not speed, okay? Definitely not, <clears throat> in my opinion. I'm sure other, others would disagree, that's, which is fine. Okay, there's intervals. Uh, work on that. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, mini, uh, mini year-long pursuit, okay? I almost want to say mini lifetime pursuit. <laughs> um, so, intervals. Now, let's, let's jump on into Roman numerals. I'm going to kind of keep it more content-based today and less playing because there's so much to cover. All right, good, good to hear from you all. Oh, yeah, I need to get through your requests here. I'm going to do some live transcribing and show you how I learn a song by ear. I haven't used um, sheet music for pop rock, blues, country in, in over 10 years. I do use sheet music for classical and for jazz sometimes. But I use my ear. I trust my ear far more than ultimateguitar.com. <clears throat> so, um, Roman numerals. If you want to learn some songs by ear, you have to learn Roman numerals. All right. So, if we're in the key of, let's pick a different key. Can you all pick a key? 
pick any key for me. <clears throat> Major or minor. Have you all checked out John Mayer's new album, Sob Rock? Pretty great. Such a great, such a great musician Man. and songwriter. I do have a lesson on Last Train Home, both the song and the solo. I should probably do some more lessons on that album. All right, no takers for a key? I know there's a little bit of lag when I ask something. C, all right, good. Oh, you guys tied. A laughed my ass off, said C. So we'll, we'll do C. <clears throat> All right, so for C, um, if I want to do Roman numerals, here's a one chord. We're in major. Okay, good. So here's a one chord. Two chord is minor. It's the second note of the major scale. It's a D minor. Third note is, sorry, third Roman numeral is minor. E minor. Fourth Roman numeral and fifth Roman numerals are major. F and G. Four, five. Six is minor. Seven is half diminished or just diminished. And then eight is an octave. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. You can kind of ignore the seven, to be honest, a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get the sound of that in our ears and mix them up in our practice sessions. Let me go to the six. I'll go to the four. Get that sound in your head. Five. Here's the three. Here's the six. Here's the two. Here's the five. Let's go back to the two. Let's go to the one. Let's go to the four. Let's go to the two. And just reinforce that. The great thing about music is you can hear, you can hear it and reinforce it over and over. One, four, two, five. Every Roman numeral has a certain sound, no matter what key. Great thing about music is it's relative, at least in equal temperament. So if I picked a different key, here's E, which we also had a request for E from Ben. One, six, four, two, five. Just get that sound in your ear. Four. Probably a little more fun than doing the interval stuff. Two, five, three, six, five, four, five, one. One, two, three, four. Lean on me. Four, three, two, one. One, six, five, four, four, five, two, four. Deceptive cadence, six. That's another topic, cadences. All right. So when you do Roman numerals as a exercise, you really pay attention to what they sound like. Can you, if I have this note, can you hear the four and five? No, no. That's the four. Can you hear the five? No. So crucial, so crucial. Can you hear the one? No. Can you hear the three? No. Can you hear the two? No. Can you hear the six? No. Can you hear the four? Can you hear the two? Can you hear the five? Can you hear the seven? Can you hear the two? Can you hear the five? Can you hear the one? If I lost my my ear training skills, I would be in trouble, because okay, I play in four bands, and uh, the little secret that I don't always memorize everything, so I kind of rely on my ear, okay, probably get in trouble for saying that, but I really do, and I've been in situations where I'm playing jazz gigs, and they'll call a tune I don't know, and either you stand there and look confused, or you figure it out on the spot. Okay, which I've had to do many times. It's terrifying, but amazingly educational. So why don't we work through some of these requests? Because uh, before I know it, I'll probably just talk and talk, and then we'll be, you know, we got to get going. So 
John Frusciante, Modern Love. All right, let's do this. Oh, boy. Sorry for the shaking. Uh, it's just that I'm using my laptop camera, which I'd like to change if I can, if I can do it. I don't see no results for John Frusciante, Modern Love. That's too bad. So I'm not seeing it, Ben. I'm not seeing it on Apple Music. John Frusciante, Modern Love. It's not showing up. Sorry. So let's go to the next one, unless you can tell me what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> so the next one is Beach Boys, Wouldn't It Be Nice? All right. Good. Let's do that. Sorry for the shaking. Let's listen to this and do some transcribing. So the first goal is to find the root or find the key. It's F, okay? You kind of find where what seems like home. The intro is in something different. It sounds like D major. The intro is in D major. No, it's not. It's A major. But now it's F major. Four chord. Three chord. One chord. Here's the four chord. Two chord. Okay, so so uh, I had to find the the key, which is F major, and then I know that's the one chord, and it's major because. melody is clearly playing a major third that's a clearly an F major not an F minor so that's the first thing you want to say are we in a major or minor key we're in major what wouldn't it be nice da, da, da. what's the next chord da, 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 four chord I can just hear that because of the interval and the trainings I've uh, the training I've done with my ear da, 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 da. then it goes to a two chord which is G minor now how did I do that easier said than done right well you listen for the bass. You really listen for the bass. So, the bass is... The bass is going from F to B flat to G. Up a fourth from F to B flat, down a minor third to G, although I don't really think of it like that. I think of it as it's going to the four chord, then the two chord. And the four chord is major, and the two chord is minor. Is it always like that? No, but if it was if it was not minor, it would really stick out. It would sound like this. We would really notice that. So then you would know, oh, that's a two major chord, not following the rules of traditional harmony. Wouldn't it be F up a one chord here, here? Here's the four, so important. Then the two, back to the one. Then to the four, and then the two. Uh, then it goes to the relative minor. I just know because I can hear it in my head. That's the sixth chord, D minor. Daka, 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 daka. Let's see. There's the D minor. Whoops. What is that? Oh, maybe B flat. So, much better. Sounds like a two chord kind of. Let's see. No, it's not. Maybe it's G major. Hmm. 
That's a tough one. Sounds like G major to me. No, it's going to be Gosh darn it. This is what I was worried about. Now I'm going to be stumped here. flat major. Yeah, it, to me it sounds like a B flat major, but I'd have to listen a few more times. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay. Sounds like a B flat over C, which is a slash chord. Michael. Hey, Don. My name is Mitch, by the way, but Michael's close enough. <laughs> oh, it was a live recording off YouTube. Sorry, Ben. Gotcha. Can you jam on piano for a second? I always, I always see if it in the background. Photographs and letters by Andy Farrell. Okay, let me jam on piano for a sec. Just for a second. I, uh, I used to play piano every day, wake up and play Bach and Mozart, because I thought if I'm going to be a doctor of music, I should really have the piano down. Sorry, that's not the best view of me, <laughs> just with my back to you, but anyway. Okay, let's get through some more requests. So um, now I'm after this live stream, I'm going to have to go and figure out what that chord was being on the spot. It's kind of tough, right? Good. All right. Oh, thanks. Uh, so we got uh, Pink Floyd, Lucifer, Sam. Sure. Let's do some live transcribing here. Is this making sense though? The Roman numerals are so important. Okay, Lucifer, Sam. Here we go. E. Now, I've heard this song many times, so I know that that's, I know a little bit about it, but I've never, I don't think I've played in, in, in over 20 years, because I, I played, I played a lot of the Piper at the Gates of Dawn songs in high school, but, uh, it's F sharp minor, F sharp minor pentatonic. And it goes fifth tritone, fourth minor third. Then it goes to the four, and it does the same exact riff. Very popular in blues and rock. Fifth tritone, fourth minor third of B, which is the four chord. Back to the one chord. Barrett loved chromatic progressions. Let's see. Something. 
Yeah, I would have to listen to it, but... That cat's something I can't explain. But that's, that's how you would find it. You basically find the root, F sharp, and then the first interval is a fifth. And then it goes chromatically down. Flat five, four, flat three. Good, almost through these. Or maybe that was it. Uh, isn't my girl in there? Okay, and then uh, the opening for Purple Haze. Cool, I think we got through the the, the last the, uh, the requests. Oh, Photographs and Letters by Andy Farrell. Let's do that. Okay, Photographs. Excuse my reach here and, and but I, I do have my computer and keyboard in the same spot here. My video, I mean, my uh, camera. Okay, Photographs and Letters. Let's try that. Here it is. Come on. Play. Okay, here's a song I never heard before. C major. I don't have perfect pitch, I have relative pitch. hear the Roman numerals. So, I've never heard this song before. But I already know it's a one, three, six, five. All these chords are diatonic, meaning they're in the key of C major. So it's not that hard for me to figure that out because I've really trained my ear to know what does the three chord sound like? Well, it sounds like this. What does the six chord sound like? It sounds like this. What does the five chord sound like? Sound like it sounds like this. Yeah, it's nice. Very pretty. One, oops. Three, six, five. Train your ear, right? Still looping. One, three, six, five. Okay, so it's just looping. It might go to somewhere else later. So. You can train your ear to pick these things up instantly, right? So, why don't I play some more music? Uh, thanks for those wonderful requests, and uh, hopefully um, that sheds some light on how I'm, I'm going about... Of course, my camera's getting all messed up now. How I go about learning these, right? You find the root, you find the one chord, and you really get the Roman numerals down to the point where where everything is recognizable. The one chord, the four chord, the five chord, good place to start. The six chord, the relative minor, the two and three minors. Okay. Then when things are changed, like flat seven, very popular. You know it because you know the flat. Okay. You know it because you know the major scale so well that when it's flatted, you can tell. Any patrons here? 
Don Myers, I think, is a patron. So yeah, check out the Patreon. Um, I think there's over 80 tabs up there. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a really uh, helpful thing for me to have, have the Patreon because it allows me to, to spend more time on the channel and to develop more material. And it's just great to be able to help people a little more so that they can see the tabs and everything. What was that song I just played? Well, uh, it was a request from, was it George? Yeah, George for Photographs and Letters by Andy Farrell. I had never heard the song before and I was doing a live ear training, a live uh, transcription of it. Let me play some Nora Jones. If you're really serious about ear training and music theory, um, you might want to look at jazz. Because it's so complex that in order to do it, it kind of forces you to get all this stuff under your belt. This whole album is great. Well, thanks, George. Yeah, that was a wonderful request. I like that song. I'll have to, I'll have to add it to my library. So, let's try this. skill to work on. It's annoyingly difficult, but it's so important. song Nora Jones truly brilliant truly brilliant songwriter she's actually Ravi Shankar's daughter which not everyone knows all right well 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 so we covered intervals Roman numerals what you want to do is you want to get the sound of these Roman numerals in your ear by using a looper pedal Oh, thanks, Rolando. That's very nice. I don't know. 
I think she's probably got a, 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 a thousand amazing companies at her disposal, but I appreciate that. That's very nice. Thanks, A, and thanks, Abroso. All right, so if, if we've covered intervals and Roman numerals, that's really the theoretical stuff I wanted to cover. If you say, well, all right, uh, Mitch, I understand um, that, you know, these are important things and maybe you've studied these things and whatever, but maybe you want to put these things into practice. You want to really have a looper pedal, okay? I have all my private students. I tell them, you know, besides paying me, you're also going to have to buy a looper pedal if you really want to take it to the next level. And you want to loop some of these Roman numerals and get that sound flowing in your ear over and over again. Okay. Thank you for, oh, Francois. Francois. I haven't practiced your name in a while. Um, Francois. Francois. So, um, if you have a loop, and uh, say like, let, let's take an E major, okay, and we want to practice a one, six, four, five progression. Now I can have that loop in my ear over and over. So let's try it, something just off the cuff here. Two, three, four. There's a one chord, six chord, four chord, five chord. Triads, optional. Now I hear one chord, six chord. Okay, get that sound in your ear. Now I'm just going to play some E major pentatonic and have fun of it. E major pentatonic or C sharp minor pentatonic. song. Get those sounds in your ear. Now I'm going to switch to E major scale. something to do would be make a loop this weekend or this week uh, and hear over and over what a one chord six chord four chord five chord sound like and you know can you stop the loop and still hear the root notes not the whole chords necessarily but just the root note root notes Doom. sorry boom there's the one chord six chord four five one then test it. There's the six, four, five. Then if you get that down, can you challenge yourself further to pick any note of the major scale and go there? Three, six, uh, four, seven, five. Oh, sorry. Two, seven, six. 
you don't have to go falsetto and sound like that, but you know what I mean? Basically challenge yourself to hear it and sing it before you play it. And that's when you really are making some progress. So much magic with those dancing fingers. Thank you. Oh, that's so nice, Rolando. I appreciate it. So, that's why the major scale is so important. Then if we want to do more... Uh, interesting scales, not interesting, but uh, other, other scales that are not major, we can use the major scale as a place to change from. So if I want to do some blues, I, uh, do I have pentatonic lessons um, in my Patreon, George? Um, mm, I have some exercises using the pentatonic scale. I've been meaning to actually post more pentatonic lessons specifically on the Patreon. They're all coming. The Patreon is pretty new uh, within a, within the last five months or so, so it's it's, it's coming along. Uh, but yeah, but if you join the Patreon at the five dollar level, you can actually request specific materials that I will get to a lot quicker than on if I didn't have those requests. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so yeah, if you're looking at minor, that's a whole different topic that has to do with in my opinion, starting with relative minor, the sixth chord, and not going too crazy yet, and just understanding that the minor scale is E major, e, is an E major scale starting on the sixth degree. And if this is your one chord now, this would be flat three, but it's still E major. Um, e major is still the relative major, so you can play the same chords of E major in, in relative minor. So that's a different uh, lesson where you can actually say flat three, flat seven, flat six, five, one, four, flat seven. A little more tricky, right? Because we have to deal with flat notes. But if you learn the major scale really well, you're learning the minor scale without even knowing it because you just start on the sixth note. There's the sixth note. The same exact notes are in minor. Back to major. All right, we'll probably keep it. Oh my goodness, it's already been an hour. I can't believe it. I love how these things fly. And by the way, uh, I usually don't mention this too often, but I do offer private lessons. So I do have some availability uh, in my schedule. Um, you know, so email me. It's in the description below if that's something of interest to you. And check out the Patreon. All right, gotta throw those things in there. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, I know that you know we covered a lot. And sometimes um, when these live streams were we're pretty much introducing topics, right? So it's not like I'm giving you a full blown in-depth lesson on every single thing. But I do hope it's been helpful, maybe motivational, maybe inspirational, maybe just interesting or entertaining. That's fine too. Good to see you all. I, I love seeing uh, some familiar faces in here like Francois, George, Sobroso, A, Rolando, and then some of you I haven't seen before like Lil, Lil Kimo or Lil Kemo. Oh, Don, good to see you, Don. Good to see you, Ben. So I really appreciate you guys kind of keeping with, uh, sticking with the channel and sticking with me. I think that's all. I think it's everybody. Have a good one too, and uh, thanks to you all. And uh, you know, have a wonderful weekend. Please enjoy yourself when you play guitar. Don't uh, you know? Uh, don't take it too seriously, right? Take it seriously enough to have fun. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan is a uh, another patron. Good to see you, Jonathan. I'm looking forward to doing your Tenacious D request um, for... Uh, dude, I totally miss you. All right, everybody. Rock on. Listen to some music this weekend. Relax and uh, enjoy. Bye-bye.